Dental Considerations for Treatment of Patients with Diabetes Mellitus Diabetes mellitus has various impacts on the oral cavity, which include periodontal disease, salivary gland dysfunction, infections, halitosis, oral soft tissue lesions, and compromised oral wound healing. Pre-treatment approaches for dental management in diabetic patients are discussed here. A concerned physician must be consulted to assess diabetic control in patients. Prior to dental treatment, the type and treatment of diabetes must be considered. Information must be gathered about the type of diabetes drugs being used, their mechanism of action and their interactions with other drugs. Necessary measures must be taken to manage hypoglycemia risk. It is important to ensure that patients have eaten food and taken their medications correctly, before treatment. Take prior glucometer readings in patients who are at a high risk of complications, are on insulin or indicated for a surgical procedure. Prevent and eliminate infections promptly, by administering antibiotics whenever necessary. Review and update medical history and patient medication at each dental appointment. The blood glucose levels must be measured prior to the procedure and the procedure can be done if the blood glucose levels are between 100 to 200 mg per deciliter. In cases where blood glucose levels are greater than 200 mg per deciliter, a specialist must be consulted. Blood glucose must be monitored every hour if the procedure is taking longer than expected. Antibiotics must be used as a prophylactic measure, since infection is likely in some procedures such as tooth extraction, biopsy, subgingival curatage, endodontic treatment and other surgical procedures. Morning appointments are preferred and patients are advised to take usual insulin dosage in normal diet before procedure. A traumatic methods must be used due to higher probability of complications or fracture during certain procedures. In patients with well-controlled diabetes no special precautions are needed for dental procedures. In patients with uncontrolled diabetes, the procedures must be delayed until metabolic control is achieved. Caution must be taken against infections and impaired wound healing. The following measures must be taken for surgical procedures under local anesthesia in type 1 and type 2 diabetes patients. Glycemic controls, cardiac, neurological and renal evaluations must be performed prior to surgery. All diabetic patients must be assessed for the presence of autonomic neuropathy. The pre- and post-general anesthesia procedure must be determined in advance and must be implemented and monitored along with the general anesthesiologist and related specialist treating the patient for diabetes. For surgical procedures under local anesthesia in patients with type 1 diabetes, the patient must be hospitalized 2 to 3 days prior to the surgery to achieve glycemic control. The surgery must be the first scheduled surgery in the morning. The patient must arrive on an empty stomach and no insulin should be administered. During the procedure, 10% dextrose 500 cubic centimeters at 100 milliliters per hour is administered through one vein. 50 international units of regular insulin and 50 milliliters of 0.9% isotonic solution, at 2 to 4 international units per hour must be administered through the other vein, based on the patient's plasma glucose level. For type 2 diabetes patients undergoing surgical procedures under local anesthesia, patient must be hospitalized 2 to 3 days prior to the surgery. Metformin must be suspended 1 week prior to the surgery and sulfonylureas must be suspended 1 day before the surgery. Insulin is administered at 0.3 to 0.5 units per kilogram per day. Patients must come without eating a regular meal and without taking oral anti-diabetics. The administered fluids must not contain lactate. After this point, other procedures must be monitored in the same way as it is done for type 1 diabetes patients. Post-surgery, for type 1 and type 2 diabetics, previous diabetes treatment protocols must be continued once the patient becomes stable. 
Subcutaneous insulin treatment must be administered after first post-operative meal. Glucose and serum electrolyte values must be monitored for as long as glucose insulin potassium solution is administered in the post-operative periods after treatments under general anesthesia. A thorough understanding of diabetes impact and dental management considerations is essential to provide effective and safe oral health care treatments for diabetic patients.